Where are we? Agile best practices. We've just completed our overview of agility and now I'd like to talk to you about agile best practices, which practices you should implement, what are the first steps towards agile development, the seven essentials for successful agile projects, and lastly what are some barriers you will face when adopting agility at your organization. Agile best practices and adoption rate. On this slide, I've enclosed a survey regarding Agile best practices and their adoption rate. I'm not going to discuss all 10 items listed in this survey, rather I'll focus on four of them. I'll start with continuous integration. If your team has to stop to manually create and test the build, it will impact their velocity. Make your build self-testing, commits done every day, test in a clone environment, and allow everyone to see the build results. Code regression testing. If your team is conducting two week or four week iterations, but it takes two weeks for QA to conduct a regression test, it will impact their velocity. Look to automate as much testing as possible. Regression testing can be used to not only test the correctness of the software, but it can be also used to track the quality of its output. Test driven design. What is often overlooked when teams move to agile requirements like user stories is the need to write strong test cases. Somewhere in the process, we need to articulate the software functionality. Not only do we need to have the test cases created, but to improve our velocity, we should also have them automated. As software is checked in, builds are created, we should then be able to automatically run our test cases. Finally, we'll look at active stakeholder participation. When the team is making decisions at a rapid pace, they need the stakeholder actively engaged on a daily basis. The stakeholder needs to manage and prioritize the product backlog, accept or reject work products, be responsible for the application's business value, and facilitate communication of information between the business and the development team. So why did I highlight these four? Because when product teams try to become highly iterative, they need to examine what may prevent them from moving fast or faster. These highlighted items are often overlooked by companies and then they don't understand why their velocity and feature development is woefully low during a sprint or iteration. Which best practice should I implement first? I'm often asked that question, or I'm asked, Will every organization get the most benefit from implementing the top one or two best practices? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Each organization is different. Each has different issues which require different solutions. The key is to accurately understand your software development issues, find the root causes, and identify solutions that will not cause further issues. To put it another way, Agile best practices are answers to problems. So what problems are you experiencing? If you'd like assistance, ICON ATG offers organizational and project assessments to determine your strengths and weaknesses and then creates an iterative adoption roadmap for you. First steps for agile development. In business, there's never the chance to take a month off from work to learn new skills. We all need things that we can apply quickly and which pay back in time quickly. This means that changes are resource constrained and it's critical for us to choose correctly what to do. This is not just prioritization or deciding that something is more important than something else, but choosing or deciding not to do something else. Therefore, here's a brief list we should consider when embarking on Agile development. First, you should assign and develop a product owner. Then you should consider hiring or contracting an experienced Agile coach. You should then train the entire team on Agile principles. You should select and implement best practices as outlined on the previous slides. You should iteratively develop an iterative plan for delivery. And lastly, you should ensure automation support is in place and the team understands how to use it. The seven essentials for support is in place and the team understands how to use it. The seven essentials for successful Agile projects. In reality, there are numerous reasons for successful Agile projects, but we'll highlight our focus on these seven for the purposes of this webcast. Number one a frequently updated plan and a mechanism to communicate the plan. Number two, a high degree of collaboration between all team members. Number three, frequent builds to prove out requirements and test the design. Number four, a strong configuration management system to control code access and rollback changes if necessary. Number five, automated build management to perform their frequent builds, sometimes many per day. Number six, Recognize product owner and agree to pr uh, prioritize product backlog. Number seven, planned approach to organizational change management and adoption. 
Due to the high degree of collaboration between all team members, it stands to reason that software configuration management, strong release engineering practices, and a workflow tracking and management system should be in place to ensure that team is working as productively as they can. The barriers to agile adoption. I think it's important to not only know what is required for success, but we should also know what barriers may lie ahead of us on this agile journey. This survey provided by version 1 prevents the top 9 barriers to agile adoption that companies are currently experiencing. And they are ability to change organizational culture, general resistance to change, personnel with the necessary agile experience, management support, project complexity or size, customer collaboration, confidence in the ability to scale agile methods, perceived time to transition, and budget constraints. We should keep in mind that change can be tricky. Rarely identifying the cure is the issue. It's getting everyone to follow it. Adoption is the power behind any change, and to drive adoption you need to keep things simple. This means along with building awareness and understanding, you need to build skills in your developers, your testers, your business analysts, your managers, and the business itself.